Welcome to Design Diary, the podcast where you get to look inside my board game design notebook as well as what's going on inside my head. We look at a new word each day from the sense of mechanics, tone, theme, or inspiration for a full game. Today's word is chivalry. Mounted men at arms, gallant or distinguished gentlemen, the system, spirit, or customs of medieval knighthood, and the qualities of the ideal knight, chivalrous conduct. And I, I sort of went with that third one, the system, spirit, or customs of medieval knighthood. Um, because there's a lot of neat things there, and I'm going to read a little bit about that in case this is a word that you want to design based off of. And then I'll get into what I designed, because at first I did not hit my mark, and I'm going to skip most of that. But uh, the, the system and spirits and customs of medieval knighthood, there was something called the Ten Commandments of Chivalry, which was... Uh, Gautier, I believe, G-A-U-T-I-E-R. Um, Gautier's Ten Commandments of Chivalry are, Thou shalt believe all that all that the church teaches you, and thou shalt observe all its directions. So listen to the church. Thou shalt defend the church. Thou shalt respect all weaknesses, and shalt constitute thyself the defender of them. So uh, respect and defend weaknesses. Uh, thou shalt love the love the country that in which thou wast born. Thou shalt not recoil before thine enemy. This is hard to say. <laughs> this stuff. It's easier to read. Thou shalt make war against the infidel without cessation and without mercy. Thou shalt perform scrupulously thy feudal duties. If they be not contrary to the laws of God, thou shalt never lie and shalt remain faithful to thy pledged word. Thou shalt be generous and give largess or largess to everyone, uh, which I did define as just donations and contributions, I believe. And thou shalt be everywhere and always the champion of right and the good against injustice and evil. So it's a long way of saying be good, protect others, protect those that are less fortunate than you, do not keep anything for yourself and do not... Um, you know, do not be greedy and all kinds of things like that, as well as respecting where you're from and the church that you follow. Um, and, and be strong and, and willed and everything against your enemy. It's interesting to read back the history of it and then think about what it is today. Chivalry, I think of it just as like a, I guess you see like a man holding his jacket down so a woman can walk over a puddle. Um, and I guess it makes sense back to the original roots. Maybe her, she's walking over the puddle because her feet are exposed or something along those lines. But it's definitely very, very different than what it was re referring to knights and things like that. So I went around a couple ideas of just trying to like get an idea of, a, of it not being just simply be a good player in a co-op game. Like I, I definitely hovered around that, um, you know. Don't think about yourself. Think of the team. You know, we're not we're in it for everybody, not just ourselves, but also like working uh, by our lowest performing member of the of the team. Um, sort of like a like a no child left behind, where whoever's weakest due to whatever situation they're in or whatever tools that they have, you know, we're working to pull them forward. So it's kind of you know we're we're working as a team, but we're going to score for our lowest person which I'm sure has been done in a couple games, and I feel like I've heard of that. But I thought about it actually being a game about protecting, uh, for about resisting temptation. Um, on your turn, you either, and this is, I'll, I'll read it as I wrote it so you can kind of get into what my thoughts were. On your turn, you either get to take the card of your team or take the card of your enemy. Then you will play it into a secret area. And that started to feel a little bit like something like the Resistance or Secret Hitler or something like that. And I wanted to make it part of a larger like a war-based game, and I thought of it as um, uh, worker placement. So worker, in a worker placement game, you're going to place a worker on the board, and you get the effects of the area that you place that worker. But what I wanted to do was you're placing the worker on a board, and it's a location, and every one of these locations has different people there, and you get to interact with them, and that's what you're doing by placing your worker in that area. And maybe we're you know knights and soldiers of whatever, and we're trying to you know, prepare the land for war or something along those lines, you get to talk to people. Now, each person is a deck of, a small deck of cards, maybe even just like two or three. 
before the game, you're going to either take out one so it randomizes a little bit so you don't know exactly what's in there, or maybe you're going to add a random one from a deck, which is probably even better because it really starts to randomize it up. Now, we know a little bit about this person. Maybe their cards are, let's say it's a farmer. So their one card is, is food, another card is a tool that they have, um, another card might be a weakness that they have, they might be low on money, and we throw a random card in there. So let's say the random card they get is a, is a gold amulet for whatever reason. Now, when I go to interact with them, my goal in this game is to be, you know, we're, we're these chivalrous knights. I'm trying to prepare the lands for war. I'm trying to help these people out. I can swap any of their cards with one of my cards. Now, I can give them something that's bad for them and take their gold amulet. I could do that when I go there. I could give them a, you know, a, a wound or whatever it is. I could... Um, swap their uh, their problem, their low on money, and give them some money. So I take the low on money card, which um, it's not great for me, but it's maybe good for them. And then maybe I can use that low on money card for somebody else that I find out is 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 an evil, you know, uh, worker of the enemy or something along those lines. So every turn you meet with someone. Um, they could be political figures, workers, they could be peasants, they could be anything, a shopkeeper. And then each has their cards, which we know some of them. We know the tone. We know maybe part of their deck. So when I add one, remove one, then you go to interact with them. And you see a little bit of what they have. And you don't know what I gave them or what I didn't do. And, and based off what they had, it's going to change my decision as well. I, if I want to be a bad person in this game, which I can... I can do it, but if I'm too obvious, if I'm feeding them with bad things, people are going to know that it was me. So that you have to be, you have to be subtle in that. And uh, so to keep reading, um, let's see. You interact with the character. You look at their cards. Swap with one of yours. Uh, you see their cards. You have a choice. You can help them or help yourself. Uh, and helping yourself could also be hurting them. You're taking something away from them. As the game goes on, uh, some characters become helpless. And you can make other sacrifices to really help them because you want this kingdom or town or village to thrive. Uh, you want it to be ready when it comes time for this war, things like that. Uh, worker placement, you look at a character, you swap uh, one of their cards. Uh, end of the game, the players are going to reveal all their characters and their status. So not our characters, uh, the characters on the board. We're going to go through and see how they made out. Um, you're going to reveal all of them. We're going to go through and say, well... The farmer, you know, he's got two wounds, but he also produced all this food, and, you know, eventually he didn't make it, but the food spread around the kingdom. And resolve that and see what happens. Then it goes to the next character, and maybe there's even some sort of, like, timing, you know, the way initiative and the way it goes through, or even just the way it spreads through the land and things like that. The other thing you're going to do is look at your characters and then resolve them. The characters might be uh, filled with great things, and not that selfless, chivalrous knight. If you're filled with great things, then you did the opposite of what you're going to do. And then maybe you're, you know, you're declared the enemy. Um, and then the good ones are the ones that don't have anything left. They gave it all away and they, and they help people. And at that point, there needs to be some sort of resolution about the good versus the evil and how things work out and who wins and who loses. So it's like a, almost like a, like a pre-battle where the battle is the resolution of, of, how everybody turned out and then we see you know who was good who was evil and which side uh which side wins this this thing so i like that idea and i almost want to <laughs> work on it today it's one of those things where it hits some beats i like um and it hits some that i think are challenging uh you know character abilities and and even worker placement is is a challenge for me so i want to mess around with this and I'm curious what other ideas come out for chivalry. It seemed to me like, you know, co-op and, and be a good person. And then it evolved into maybe don't, maybe don't be a good person. So uh, if you have any ideas, let me know. It's the start of a new week. Go design some games and I, I'm going to go do the same thing. All right. See you tomorrow.